just don't understand God is for me When life doesn't go the way I planned God is for me When I just don't understand God is for me When life doesn't go the way I planned God is for me Welcome to Sunday School, everyone. I'm so glad that you guys are back. This is our research lab, and you guys know that every time we come in here, we're learning about how God is for us, and this week's no different. Let's pray first, okay, because <laughs> this is really exciting today. Close your eyes. Jesus, thank you so much for allowing us to be able to gather again. We are so thankful and we pray that you would bless our minds to receive every good thing that you have planned for us to learn today. In Jesus name, amen. Good job guys. Well today in the research center we are learning about how huh, what it really truly means to be thankful. What are you thankful for? Well you know Thanksgiving is the time where we reflect and think about that and we can speak on those things. We can be thankful for our talents that God has given us. Did you know they are gifts from him? Some of you are really good at singing and others can play an instrument. And some people are really good at seeing what is needed to be done and being a really good helper. That is so wonderful. And we can be thankful for blessings that God has given us, like our home that we live in, our family members, the clothes that we wear, the food we eat, we can be thankful for all of those blessings. And you know what else? We can also be thankful in the tough times. Now I know what you're thinking, merciful Monica, how and why on earth would I want to be thankful for tough times? That's a good question. And we are going to learn in Bible Land today about a man who faced some really tough times but refused to let that keep him from doing what God created him to do. Are you guys ready to go? This is such an exciting story. This man, he's such a hero. Let's swipe, okay? One, two, three. that you are here today and have I got something exciting to share with you. When I came to Bible Land today, I found sandwiches. Do you like sandwiches? So do I. What is your favorite sandwich? Oh, I heard you. Oh, ham and cheese. And you? Peanut butter and jelly. Strawberry jelly. Oh, you like grape? Okay. Well, you can eat grape. I like strawberry. But these sandwiches that I found in Bible Land were not ham and cheese. They were not peanut butter and jelly of any kind of jelly. I was hungry and I looked at those sandwiches and thought, mmm. And then something said to me, you better check those sandwiches. And it's a good thing I did. Do you know what was in those sandwiches? You will never guess. So I'm just going to tell you. It was honey, which is good on a sandwich but it was locusts. You know those things that fly around and go bzzz and make all that noise? It was a sandwich with honey and locusts. And I thought, okay, we need to research this. So I looked and I thought in the Bible, where do I remember hearing about honey and locusts? And I remembered, it's about a man named John the Baptist. So that's what I'm going to share with you today here in Bible Land. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 3, because that's the part of the story that we're going to read today, and find you a nice place to sit. And are you ready? Here we go. There was a man and a woman, a man named Zacharias and his wife named Elizabeth, and they did not have any children. And so as they got older and older and older, I'm sure they wondered, will we ever have children? They were more like your grandparents' age rather than your parents. 
But one day while Zechariah was in the temple, which is like the church, the house of the Lord, an angel appeared unto him. And the angel began to tell him that he and his wife Elizabeth were going to have a son. And they told him that they should call him John. And then the angel began to tell him, your son is going to do awesome things because this is what he's going to do. He is going to lead the people to the Lord. And Zechariah thought, really? Uh, my wife and I, after all this time, are... he couldn't believe it. But just like the angel said, there was the day where they heard that baby cry, when that baby John was born. And as he grew up, can you just imagine that as he would ask possibly his mom and dad, tell me a story. Do you ever ask your mom and dad that? I think you do. Tell me a story before I go to bed. I wonder what kind of stories that John had. Do you think he would say, tell me the one about the angel? And so maybe his mom and dad would sit down and say, before that you were born, an angel appeared to your father in the temple. And tell me again, what did the angel say? And I wonder if John wondered, hmm, I wonder if John thought about how is that going to happen? How am I, John, going to lead people to the Lord? What does that mean? Well, one day I just know that this is the day and I just go tell everybody, come to the Lord. I'm sure he had some questions, but here's what John did. John just grew up and we see in the Bible, you ready for Luke 3? This is where we read. Okay. In Luke 3, it just says at the end of Verse 2, it says, The word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he came into all the country about Jordan. That was like a town. And it says, Preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So one day, John is just there in the wilderness, and he might have been praying. Do you like going and walking outside, maybe going on a hike, and you look at the beauty of outside and the wonderful clouds and the mountains, if you have mountains around you, or maybe it's just trees, and you think, oh, God, these are so beautiful. And you find yourself just beginning to talk to God. Well, it might have been just that way with John when all of a sudden God talked to him. That's what the Bible says. That God spoke to him as John was in the wilderness and he knew this is the day. This is the day. This is the day where I'm going to use the talents that God gave me and the reason he made me special. And I'm going to go and tell people to come to the Lord and he began to tell the people, repent, repent. Do you know what that means? It means that you need to say you're sorry for sin. What? What is sin? I'm glad you asked. Sin is anything you do that's wrong, like lying and cheating, stealing, back talking your mom and dad. They ask you to go do something. Will you go and clean your room? You're like, I don't want. Did you know? that back talking like that is sin because you're not being respectful to your parents. Talking bad about other people, being sneaky, all those things are sin. And John went to a hillside just like you see behind me and he would stand there and the Bible says John looked a little different. His jacket was made out of camel's hair. So he looked a little bit different. He didn't look like everybody else around him. And the Bible says that he ate wild honey and locusts. And so he ate a little bit different food from everyone else too. So here is this man who is different because God made him special. And he is out on that hillside and he's telling everybody who will listen, repent, make your way straight. That means turn around and straighten up. Have you, ever, have you ever had anyone tell you that? Straighten up? That's what that means. 
to make their way straight. Instead of doing things you know you shouldn't do, that you need to do things right. And so John began to tell the people that. And the neighbors began to talk and say, hey, you want to go hear John? And the Bible says crowds begin to come to those hillsides. And John would preach to them and he would tell them how that they needed to repent and be sorry for their sins and stop doing those bad things and to get their way straight because that there was going to come someone that as John baptized them in the water, there was one person that was going to come after John that was going to begin to teach them and talk to them. And he was going to baptize them with the Holy Ghost. And those people wondered. The Bible says that there were people that were so thankful, so grateful, thankful, thank you. They were so glad that John told them what they needed to do to get their hearts right. Because when you do bad things, how do you feel? You feel really bad. Like you kind of want to hide and you hope no one saw what you did. Well, when you carry all that and you wake up of a morning and instead of saying, oh, what a beautiful morning, all of a sudden your first thought is, oh, I wonder if they're going to find out that I lied. Oh no. And you get that feeling in your stomach of, oh man, I wish I wouldn't have done that. And you feel that guilt. Well, the way you get rid of that is you say, Jesus, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? And then whoever you went and you told that lie to, you go to them and say, I'm sorry, I did lie, will you forgive me? And then that makes your way straight and you have made things right. And that's what these people on the hillside, many of them came to John and were so thankful and John baptized them unto repentance. And then one day, as John is out there and he is preaching, the king came. Do you know that the king even needs to repent? He does. And his wife was there too, the queen. And as they were there, John began to preach to them. And do we change just because it's a king? Should John not have said to repent? No. Because the king needed to get his heart right too. But as John was preaching, the king, he listened to what John had to say. But the queen, his wife, she got mad. She didn't have a right response or a right attitude to the wonderful words that John was telling them. Nobody likes to be told that they did something wrong. But do you want to keep that sin in your heart? No way. You don't want to keep that sin in your heart. So people who wanted to get that sin out were thankful. And so John just kept on preaching. And then there was another day that someone came. And it wasn't the king. And it wasn't just people on the hillside. But there was a day whenever that Jesus came walking down to where John was. And he walked right there into the water. And he said to John, baptize me. And John was like, oh, no, no, I can't baptize you. You're Jesus. Jesus had never sinned. He never did anything wrong. But have your parents ever tried to teach you something? And they said to you, do it like this. Here, let me show you. I've had that happen. Have you had that happen? Well, that's what Jesus was doing to all those people. He wanted to show them it is very important that you are baptized. So here, let me show you. And so Jesus showed them and a voice came down from heaven and everybody knew at that point, oh, this is the one. This is Je Jesus. This is the one that John was talking about. The one that was going to come and baptize us with the Holy Ghost, everyone who is there knew. Oh, so this is the one that John was telling us, you listen to me and I'm going to tell you to repent, but there's one coming after me. Oh, so then John, his job was over. John had come. John had trusted. 
John had, even though people may have made fun of him and not liked what he was saying when he told them the truth of how to get their hearts right, John didn't change who he was or who God made him to be just because a few people didn't like what he had to say. John knew I was created special by God for a special purpose, and he did exactly what he was created to do. And all those people that had listened to John and they had changed their behavior and they had got their heart right, now their hearts were ready to listen to Jesus. And that is the most important thing. And you've come to Sunday school today and you want to hear about the Word of God. And so you have listened to this wonderful story about John the Baptist. And you can be just like those people on the hillside. You can make a decision to get your heart right. And how do we do that? Well, we know that Jesus came to die on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven. And as Jesus began to teach those people that had listened to John, there were some people that said, oh, I know who you are. I want all of those wonderful things that you have for me, Jesus. And Acts chapter 2, verse 38, it says that you must repent and be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins. That's all those sins being taken away and that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that is Jesus living in your heart. So today, what a great thing would be for you to do is to bow down on your knees and talk to Jesus. Have a time of prayer. Tell him, Jesus, I'm really sorry for those things that I did that I know I shouldn't do. That when I wake up in the morning and I remember him and I feel really bad, will you please forgive me? And the Bible says that Jesus absolutely will. And then you get baptized in Jesus' name. Because who died on the cross? Jesus did. So we're baptized in his name. And then you just begin to tell Jesus, thank you. Thank you for forgiving you for your sins. And you just get your mind on Jesus and begin to talk to him. And he will give you the Holy Ghost as you speak in another language as he comes to live in your heart. And you don't have to be a grown-up to do that. Jesus will come and live in the heart of anyone who is sincere and truly wants their lives to be changed. And then that Jesus in your heart gives you the power or the strength to make right choices. And that is something to be thankful for. Wow! Wasn't that so awesome in Bible Land? John the Baptist was created so special by God. He went out and he told everyone that he could. Get your hearts right. Get the sin out. Repent. Make good choices. And people came from near and far to hear what he had to say. That is so amazing. And sometimes when we go out and we try to make the right choice, we face difficulties. Some people make fun of us. Some people tell us that we're doing it wrong. And sometimes we just don't feel confident. But if we pray and we ask God, he can and he will help us. That's what John the Baptist had to learn. And we can learn that too. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, In everything, give thanks to the Lord. That is really important for us to remember because it reminds us that tough times, good times, Give thanks, because that's what Jesus loves. One way to be thankful is to sing to God. So join with us and let's sing our thanks to God about how he is for us.
Today, we learn about a man who had talents, and he also went through some tough times, but he was thankful through it all. Because, and remember how merciful Monica said in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything, give thanks. Give thanks for your talents. Give thanks when things aren't quite so easy. So this here is my thankful box, see? So what you can do in your house and with your family, you can make your own thankful box. I just took paper and glue and construction paper and, and made, made my own thankful box. And so here, and you can use whatever you want, post-it notes, you could cut out stuff with construction paper like I did, whatever. And then once a day, get with your family and think of things that you're thankful for. So for example, I'm thankful to be able to play the piano. Yay! So you can think of talents. I'm thankful to that I can cook real well. Whatever it is that you have, you can say thankful for your blessings and then you write them down on your piece of paper and then you put them in your blessing like, I'm thankful we have good food. I'm thankful for pizza. I'm thankful for my warm bed. I'm thankful for a coat to wear and clothes. There you are. I'm thankful for my bicycle or I'm thankful for my cars and my dinosaurs, right? Now, then when you're going through a hard time, you, your family, you know what? You can write those things down too. Yeah, God, I'm thankful for math. And because I know you're going to help me, and maybe it's not easy, but I know you're going to be help me to be strong, and you're going to help me learn this math. So you can be thankful for Jesus in the hard times too. You'll be amazed at the joy it brings to you and to your family. Now, before we go, we have two very special guests that would like to sing to you a song about being thankful. Are you ready? Here we go. One for each blessed day, two every breath I take, three for my family, four all they mean to me, five just to be alive, six for the earth and sky, and seven for heaven, for every good thing that I have comes from God. Every day. Ten for 